Yeah, so I'd done all the things at Spurs. A week later, I went up to Everton. They sort of organised that, got in touch with the gold coach there. And yeah, they sort of wanted to sign me after about three days. Pretty much, I did the year and I did. I was doing really well. I just turned 18 at the time. Thought I, want, I wanted to go and play non-league. I'd, ne I'd never played really like grassroots football. They offered me um, um, a year's extension on my contract and um, sort of just said, no, look, I want to go out and um, play non-league and um, I'd go and do it myself. The initial reaction from the club was like um, very shocked, obviously, at the time. Um, I don't really recall anyone ever doing it really before. <laughs> I went away, um, sort of started looking at other options. Two weeks after I turned the contract down, I got injured, um, like, um, like ruined the tendons of my elbow, like um, just couldn't move my arm basically for like the better part of like two or three months really. Hello and welcome back to another episode of our podcast series, Game Day where we talk to Farnham Town players on the way to the big match. Today's episode is with Farnham's number one, the best shot stopper in the league, Pat Nash. Listen as he speaks to Jack about his academy life at Everton, why he turned down a pro deal in the Premier League, and what he loves about Farnham Town. Enjoy. Right, yeah? Yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, good. Where am I sitting in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're in okay, front. Yeah. yeah, we're good. We're good, mate. Good. Um, you can stick your stuff I'll stick my stuff there, yeah. Cool. Oh, I was a little bit late, I It's alright. It's so exciting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a massive. Uh, got to keep hydrated, mate. Um, right, so this bit can go in your pocket. Um, or it's got a little clip on, and this will go up. Yeah. You're going to keep your jumper on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it's it under there. Yeah, go up your jumper. Can I just clip it on? Like that? Yeah, okay. Cool. Nice one, all good? All good. Yeah, let's, okay, let's go. You getting in first, though? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. cramping here, am I? Um, well, you can move your seat back a little bit if you want. No, that's right. Um, there's a lot of legroom for a little car. No, that's all right, mate. Yeah? Does the job, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> Welcome. It's, your f it's Patrick, right? That's my Patrick. full name, yeah. If you look at my birth certificate, yeah, it says, uh, <laughs> says that on it, yeah. Welcome to game day. Thank you, uh, thank you for having second, me. Second uh, episode. There was some sweets somewhere that I did get. I don't know if you're a sweet guy. They didn't, they didn't have prawn cocktail crisps. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually quite excited about no, it. I'm not really, uh, not really a snacky sort of guy. Uh, you don't, you to... don't look like a snacky sort of guy. So I'll tell that as a compliment. It, is a, <laughs> it is a very big compliment. <laughs> Let's start off with uh, kind of a little brief summary of, of who you are. My name's Pat. Um, yeah, I'm the goalkeeper for Farnham. Um, I joined probably coming up to about a year ago, I think now, um, like sort of April time last year. But I've been a goalkeeper sort of all my life, really. I didn't really, um, never really played anywhere else. I've always loved football. My dad played football. Um, he was a goalkeeper as well. So, but there was no sort of like push into it. I was sort of just tried it and I liked it. I was quite good at it as well. It helped. So. Um, just sort of kept going with it since I was about six, and uh, yeah, um, just sort of been doing it ever since, really. So, so why why goalkeeping? Is it just something? That I think, like I said, my dad was a goalkeeper, so it sort of like did influence me, but like subconsciously, I never he never said you do this, you know. It was um, I sort of just from like when I was a kid, I just sort of did all sorts, you know, just cricket, tennis, athletics, you know everything but rugby because I was quite small, you know, so. Um, but no, I think I sort of tried everything really and um, just sort of, I don't know, liked goalkeeping. I think, like I, like I said, I was, I was good at it. So I sort of, um, I'm sort of like that. If I'm not good at something, I'll just, you, often I'll just chuck it and think, no, I won't, I won't stick around with it. But I was all right, so I just stick, stick stuck at it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what's your like earliest goalkeeping memory? Um, that's easy. Like in the in the my in my old house, um, just having like my dad kick the ball at me, like in, in our little in our little girl like pelting it at me, because um, like obviously when you're young, your dad's like trying to not hit it as hard as he can at you because he doesn't want to hurt you. And I'm like, come on, come on, harder, harder, like that. 
Um, that's probably the earliest one, just, just flying about in the garden, you know what I mean? That's, uh, if someone did that for me that young, I'd just jump out of the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think I've picked up a lot of injuries. I remember because I've, um, I've got an uncle who's, um, who's Dutch and he, um, he recalls this story a lot when we used to go out to their flat over in, um, in Arnhem and we played football and I must have been about five and he, I was doing the same thing, like wanting them to kick it really hard at me, bent my finger back and I was in tears and <laughs> it didn't end very well. Put a bit of a damper on the trip, <laughs> but he loves, uh, he loves talk, telling that one. Well, you're like, you're quite young, aren't you? You're like 19. Oh yeah, 19. I'm going to be 20 this month though, at the end of the month, 31st. I'm Happy going to be 20. Birthday. No, don't remind me. <laughs> I'm getting old now. And you've had quite an uh, extensive football journey so far yeah. as well. Can you yeah. talk me through that a little bit? Yeah, it's been very like, like up and down. It's not, people always say it's not a straight line to where you want to get to. So it's, yeah, it's been very up and down, um, especially the last couple of years, particularly um, obviously since leaving Everton, there's a lot, been a lot of unknown, especially coming into non-league. Um, so can you talk me through that Everton stuff? Like, yeah, what yeah. kind of happened? I, um, so I, first, first of all, I was, I was obviously at Reading from, I got picked up when I was eight and all the way through, I, I was there, I was signed on um, at the academy. Um, and I was about, and I was 15 um, when I got let go um, from Reading. They, they did like predicted heights and pretty much the bottom line was that they thought I wasn't gonna be tall enough for them. I got predicted a height of like five foot eight when I was about 11. And, and I probably looked like a little girl when I was 11, so it didn't really help. Did you have the mullet then as well? Well, not to the extent as it is now, but no. Um, sort of went, went through phases, you know, it sort of comes and goes. Um, but um, yeah, so I got let go from there. And um, yeah, I didn't really know if I wanted to do it anymore because um, just thought like, if I'm not gonna be tall enough, then sort of, beating a dead horse really, I'm not, if I'm not, I'm not gonna do it here. So I met the modern day goalkeeper guys. I met all of them, they sort of got in touch. My dad reached out first and um, sort of like said, look, it's not the end of the world. You're like 15, 16, so just, you got a lot of time, which I did and um, sort of carried on. Um, went and played for Aldershot, um, about four months then COVID hit. Um, and I went to college, went to JMA. Um, Big up, JMA, very, very good place. Like that was, um, learned a lot there. It was really good. I did, took my A-levels, um, history, biology and PE. And um, yeah, so I was sort of like, learning through there and going to other clubs at the time, like the, the modern day boys, they were putting me into other different clubs. I went to um, Newcastle, Sunderland, Huddersfield with their B team. Um, just before that, I went to Fulham. Um, and, uh, and I was living in Diggs in Enfield for, um, trial at Tottenham for about three months in the summer. It's just sort of put me in trying to, it just didn't work out there for whatever reason, for, like all different clubs, you know, for, like football, it just didn't work out. Um, a lot of the clubs said I was too small, like Newcastle said I was too small, Sunderland too small. Um, Huddersfield, yeah, same thing. Um, Fulham, same thing. Um, Spurs was a bit of a funny one. They said, um, okay, there wasn't really enough space for me or whatever, it's sort, sort of a bit of a, Funny one, but um, yeah, about um, yeah. So I'd done all the things at Spurs. A week later, I went up to Everton. They sort of organised that. Got in touch with the goal coach there. Um, went up for three days. I was still wasn't really feeling it. It was a bit of a weird thing. I wasn't really feeling it because I was sort of um, obviously had all that time at Tottenham and it didn't work out. And I just thought like, I'll just do it because college starts again next week. It's just sort of August time. College starts again next week, so I'll just go in see what I can do. And then um, yeah, they sort of wanted to sign me after about three days. Oh wow. Um, so then I went back, I went back home, came back, they said they wanted to put something forward, came back home, went back to college and um, told my mates, I was like, yeah, 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 they're going to sign me. Um, obviously the, all of my mates at college, they knew um, about the other clubs. And so I'm going away, coming back, going away, coming back. So it was sort of maybe like the boy who cried wolf a little bit. He's sort of thinking like, what's going on? And I hung around for about, well, a month and a bit before Everton put a official contract towards me and so I could go up and sign so it was a bit of a limbo period and anyway, I signed there um, sort of like September October time I think and um, yeah I really enjoyed it like I was I think I've said it before it's probably the I mean it is the best job in the world if you can do it like being a pro it's just, you just all you got to worry about is just keeping your 
body um, and condition and just like um, working hard, knuckling down, I, I did really enjoy it. So you're at Everton and then why kind of choose to come to, because I might, I might be wrong here, so correct me, but they offered yeah. you a like a backup keeper contract? Yeah, so there's a, I mean, to be honest, it's all out there really, if you want to go sort of like diving into it, there's lots of um, videos and um, articles and stuff like that, as um, like, you know, Curly would know, like is that, that, that TikTok the other day. Um, pretty much I did the year and I did, I was doing really well. And bear in mind I was probably, I just turned 18 at the time. And I thought it was the best for me to go out on loan the next season. I thought I, want, I wanted to go and play non-league. I'd, ne I'd never played really like grassroots football. So yeah, I wanted to go out on loan. I felt um, everyone around me at the time thought it was a good, um, sort of my close family and um, we all thought it was a good idea to go out on loan. I, th I, th I still think it was a great idea. Um, go out on loan. Um, looking back, probably, to be honest, a bit premature. I think um, maybe a bit, might have been a bit young, but to go out on loan that early, should have just um, got my head down. I don't know. It's um, it's one of them things. Looking back on it, I probably, probably wouldn't have been so rash at the time. But um, so they offered, yeah, like I said, they offered me um, um, a year's extension on my contract, and um, sort of just said, no, look, I want to go out and. Um, play non-league and um, I'd go and do it myself. Um, which sort of led to a very, very strange summer. Um, obviously, the initial reaction from the club was like, um, very shocked, obviously, at the time. Um, a lot of other clubs very shocked at the time, thinking like, um, yeah, just, just a bit unheard of, isn't it, really? Not, not people doing that. Um, I don't really recall anyone ever doing it, really, before. <laughs> Especially at the sort of extent I work to sort of get my um, um, get my contract, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. The, the sort of trial process I went through. So I I went I went I went away. Um, sort of started looking at other options. Um, flew out to Mexico for this like trip to meet um, this guy George Campos, Mexican goalie, very um, famous Mexican goalie. And on the trip there, that was about two weeks after I turned the contract down, I got injured. Um, like um, like ruin the tendons of my elbow, like um, just couldn't move my arm basically for like the better part of like two or three months really. Um, no, two months I'd say. Um, so that was a bit of a killer. Um, got fit again, and then this opportunity popped up in Ireland with um, St Patrick's Athletic, which weirdly enough um, went out there. Um, was out there for about four or five weeks. Wasn't sort of working out. They've sort of needed a goalie to step in at the time that both their goalies were injured. They needed someone to step in and approach me and um, yeah, sort of didn't work out for whatever reason there. So I came back and then I went up to the northeast where the lads from um, the modern day goalkeeper where they're based to go in because they'd um, helped me find um, a club, find a loan. So that's where I ended up at Whitley Bay, um, which was the club that I was at before Farnham. Um, yeah, so that was a uh, it was very tough going obviously into non-league because I think I um, I think I completely underestimated it, um, like the level and everything um, about it, like the way it's sort of run, it's it's completely different to academies, like especially like a Premier League academy where you're just so looked after, you don't have to literally you don't have to worry about anything, everything's done for you. Um, so I think I completely underestimated it, but it, like I said, it really really helped me like learn and. Um, sort of just develop because it's sort of put me sort of put those building blocks down to sort of get the understanding of of non-league and how tough it can be um getting drops like going to games not knowing if you're going to play or not like because if there's another goalie there i did a lot of the time when i was there i'd go and um the manager wouldn't say if i'm playing or not he would just say at 2 30 he'll turn the board around like john hotels and it would say his name or my name it would be like I've sort of worked all week to play, and you don't. Um, so yeah, it was very tough, but like I said, it sort of taught me a lot, and um, didn't work out there again. I sort of was going through a phase of playing, not playing, and I thought, well, I'm not really, not really enjoying this. So I came back down. Um, there was an opportunity in Spain where I thought I could go and play out there. So me and my dad came came down a week later, flew out to Spain um, to meet, meet this manager and everything, and it sort of, again, didn't work out. Another thing didn't work out quite right. Um, and this was about, um, sort of like I said, this time last year really, it was just around my birthday. Um, 
flew back and as we, we flew back and the next day I woke up and um, I got sent this tweet from, um, from it was from Jono, I think he'd done it and shared it through Farnham and it was like they need a goalie, um, I think Liam had gone on holiday or whatever, I, I didn't obviously know that at the time and um, our numbers got exchanged and I got on the phone to Jono about a day later and then he said can you play like tomorrow, can you play, we're playing Napil away, can you play and um, Obviously, I didn't. I didn't know anything about Farno. I didn't know. Obviously, you guys stopped accepting that season, so filming and obviously Harry and um, all the lads had joined with the owner, the new ownership. And um, yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a shock when I walked in and saw people with cameras and how well run the club was, how like good the every everything was done compared to how where I'd been before, sort of a bit of a limbo sort of period for the last couple of months. Um, Obviously, limbo period where I learned a lot and it sort of changed my whole perception on things. So it was a um, really good learning curve and um, sort of all worked out with um, with obviously ended up here. So I was very, very, very pleased. So was that your first reaction to Farnham and? Yeah, yeah. So like I said, Jono, like that's when Jono got in touch and um, just didn't think anything of it. Just I thought like, to be honest, I was a bit of sick of non-league at the time. I was thinking like, I just want to like, get everything done for me again and I want to be back in a club where I just know you get a, you get a schedule and you just know what you're doing and but no I just like just didn't really think about it and then like yeah that was my first experience with Farnham the Napil away game I think we uh, drew two all obviously completely different team at the time like now um, compared to now a few players played like obviously Max played um, Smithy played uh, Dino uh, uh, Flatty, obviously, as well. But there's a, few, there's a few other lads. I think Shams was there as well at the time. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, just so pleased when I got there. And I sort of obviously saw a few familiar faces and whatnot. It sort of like made me settle down again. And I thought, hey, this is this is the place to be for for me. I mean, do you look at Farnham as like a bit of a stepping stone for you? Because like, you're quite young and it's still yeah. you know, it's step five of non-league. Of course, of course. You, you, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like yeah. I think it's like the elephant in the room. Like, really, it's like. It's, it's, I think for any, for anyone in my position, like a young goalkeeper, it's the perfect place to be. Like, like I say, for a stepping stone, it's like you got the exposure with what you guys do with the YouTube and everything. Like nothing sort of I do or in a game or anything goes unmissed because it's like I've got it all there, which is like perfect. It's the the best um, the best sort of club you could be at, at this at non-league. I think really for in terms of that because you get some. You get a lot of clubs in the National League who won't do anything anywhere near what you guys do. So it's um, no, it's really it's really good, and obviously um, it, what helps as well is the fact that obviously I'm from Aldershot, so it's like literally a five minute journey for me. So it couldn't be any better, really. <laughs> Let's talk about the team a little bit. Yes. So you mentioned that there's a lot of new people in this season. Obviously they're not new now. But, no, um, no, no. What's it like having? You know, people like Ryan in defence and and Cookie as well, just kind of helping. I think obviously I, I played I, when I was at Whitley Bay. I played with a lot of players who'd like won the Vars and um, who were sort of coming. They were a lot older than me, like 36, 38. You know, they were a lot older and um, sort of knew the game. They'd been at like um, Sunderland when they were younger because it's obviously up there. They'd been at Sunderland and they'd knocked about and then they'd come out of it and played non-league and what like had good non-league careers. Um, so I played with experienced players already, um, but obviously not as regular as I have this season, and um, never really got to like build those like really good relationships with them, like so it sort of which helps you when you're on the pitch. So um, no, it's really good playing with like like you say the likes of um, Ry Cookie and Mark now. Mark, what is these like top experienced players that like, like um, you can sort of learn a lot from? I think especially because I'm obviously quite young, um, just learning how to play different types of matches is great and um, they can sort of like help you along with that so it's, it's really good yeah yeah and your um, mentality on a match day uh -huh. it's um, it's a lot different to to a lot of a lot of the other players it's very much as soon as you get changed into your training uh, your warm-up stuff uh -huh. it's like you don't want to talk to <laughs> to anyone with a camera <laughs> not you <laughs> just ignore you Jack <laughs> um, yeah, like, does yeah. that help you during during the game? Like, no, kind of gets I'm just ready. like sort of in my own sort of space. I like to be sort of like left alone. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's just I'm sort of just like, like I say, just 
you, you've got to be a different person when you play, I think. You've got to be, so I'm, I won't, um, so I've sort of got to sort of get my head onto that. Um, I, I like say it because obviously I had like three goalie coaches this season. So I've got to, uh, at the club, so I've got to tell them each time like when I've sort of warm up. But it's quite simple, like when I go out there, I've just got to get my head switched on. And like, I don't know, because I train obviously throughout the week. It's just about like turning every, all, all like this like outside noise off and just thinking like, right, I've got to, Focus on like what I've got to do here, you know. And if I, if I do, I know I know if I do what I can do, sort of I'll be fine, you know what I mean. But to get in that mindset is the the first sort of the first sort of step. And then in the game, that just kind of carries on. I'm guessing. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. I mean, the the difficult the difficult thing this season was obviously not having a lot to do and maybe getting carried away when we're when we're like eight nil up, <laughs> um, not coming like steaming out and just getting bored like. Um, because it's can be it's so easy to do that. Um, so yeah, that's another like little thing like th this this season. Um, I don't think many people will be able to experience like like steamrolling in a league for the, fir for the first part of the season like we did, yeah. um, and having to sort of keep that keep that mindset going on. And how how do you stay focused and stay kind of with your head in the game when you know we're five six no up and you haven't really had to make a save um the caffeine gum helps <laughs> um no no uh a lot i don't know i guess it, it's just i guess because i've done it like literally since so this is the only thing i've ever really done is playing goal you know what i mean like so um like sport wise so and like competitively so it's like it's sort of it becomes second nature do you know what i mean just to sort of do it for the whole for the whole 90 minutes I mean little things like like just little chat and talking and um, just for really following the game and thinking like um, like what's next what could happen next because at, at the end of the day when you're eight eight nil sounds a lot better than eight one doesn't it that's what I always think so you got to like sort of keep it's like a keep that um, clean sheet and stuff like that as long as you can just think about having like maybe one more thing in the game before before it finishes even whether that's like a pass or that could be like a great save you know what I mean Every little thing has got to be like spot on. I sort of always, I play a lot of the time, especially it helps with you guys filming. I almost play a lot of the time as if there's like, you know, they have those like player cams. Yeah. Like the, the way I try and play is like as if I imagine there's a player cam on me the hot for the 90 minutes. So anything I do has got to look good, whether I'm just st stood there or whether I'm like taking a goal kick when everyone's actually looking at me. Do you know what I mean? So it's that's sort of my mentality with it. And is it um, different with? Like, you know, when, when there's a lot of people around and because you're right behind the goal or yeah. there's people, fans behind the goal. Yeah. All shouting your name. Is that, a, is that a distraction almost? Or are you kind of used to that now and it doesn't really? Uh, it's a little bit different like this level because you can hear them. Like you can actually hear what's being said and it can, it can be quite personal about like maybe your family even, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. Um, it's a little bit different, like, because when I've played in stadiums before, um, you can't really, like, it's, it's never, like, a, a, a non-league crowd who are actually trying to get under your skin. It's just family and friends, like, who are just there to support. They're not trying to, like, rattle you, you know? <laughs> you know? Um, so, no, it, it, I, I wouldn't say it gets under my skin. I just sort of, like, what, like water under the bridge for me. It doesn't like, I, I, you sort of just hear it as white noise, you know, but it's good. I, that's another thing about Farnham, the, the crowds the, 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 we pull, especially to some games, like the, that Chesham game was like unbelievable. Like the, the, the amount of numbers we had in the ground, it was a um, real good experience um, to have, so. And it seems the fans have really taken to you as well. You know, they've made, you got, you've got, like. your, own, well, you got <laughs> I, your own flag. I hope, got, I hope so, <laughs> I mean, I just try, I try, you know, um, I wouldn't say, like, I, I really appreciate all the support and everything from, from everyone because, I, like I said, I had a bit of a tough time um, the back end of last year. Uh, no, sorry, because I keep thinking it's 2023. To 2022, I had, back, yeah. I had a bit of a rough time. Um, so, I know I really appreciate it. All well, obviously, the support and everything, it's, um, that's really good. Jim and Jono, uh, you've also been working with them for quite a while now um, yeah, yeah. what's their management style for you because obviously goalkeeping isn't really their speciality no. so is that where the goalkeeper coach helps because you've had quite a few of them as well, <laughs> yeah, so yeah 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 
<laughs> um, no, yeah, Jim and Jono are like perfect for me. Like um, the exact type of managers that I, I want. They sort of like um, sort of let me crack on, but like the little like pieces of information that they'll give you in a game, you th they'll really it really helps. Um, so no, as like I said, it's um, it's really refreshing having a especially someone new, like Jim who like little things like let me dictate the way we play and stuff like that because a lot I haven't had that before really yeah you get a lot of managers just um, sort of just focusing only on the team and then and then um, letting the goalie sort of crack on with the goalie coach but no it's sort of great having like obviously a goalie coach there to support and and really be um, sort of on a personal level you can just go over and chat to him but also having like I know I can go to Jono and just sort of chat about stuff as well so and Jim likewise so it's um, no they're really 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 good um, pretty good to have um, what's your kind of prep for a match day? Um, like, do you, like the morning of and then the obviously the, the week up, because you train during the week yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's the, 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 I train in the week, so my sort of prep starts like on the, on the Sunday, really. Like I do legs in the gym on a Sunday to make sure I'm like fresh for the week. Um, but so by the time Saturday rolls around, I'm not like, I don't have to like fit it in, you know what I mean? Like little things like that. So, it's, but that's like just coming with experience of playing non-league. Like I said, it's coming from an academy. You like walk in and you've got like a schedule. So, it, coming away from that and having like not really like a babysitter, like a, um, a sports scientist to sort of pull pull you and say like this is what you got to do. You got to sort of I got to do it off my own back now. It can be quite tough to start. It was tough to start with. You can just um, go to the gym on your own and you, like. You, not got anyone there to like sort of look over you so it's um it's like quite hard to motivate yourself at times so I think that's when like you sort of really find out a lot about yourself so it's um that's good um but like I said the prep um I train all week so um it's um in, in every every morning pretty much a like, day off on a Wednesday it depends about like at the minute it's going to change a lot because I know we're going to be Tuesday Thursday Saturday um with obviously our backlog um but no, on a Saturday, it's um, just quite relaxed. Might, might take the dog for a walk, just chill out, get my stuff ready. And um, I mean, I, I would say quite relaxed, maybe too relaxed, because I'm quite, quite thin with the being late and stuff like that. Um, probably be the earliest you've Yeah, been yeah, it probably will be. <laughs> I don't really think about it, really, because it's just um, quite quite used to it now. It's a real good routine. I'm a real, I like to have, like, I like to have a routine, so it's, um, Quite good. So do you not like watch highlights of the team that we're playing and? No, not this, not this level. No, no. Um, I quite like. I, I, I've, I don't know. I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about this actually. Um, obviously, um, when you're at a club, you do analysis. Like you, you, you like sit in a classroom and you're like, say this is the way they play. This winger light is left footed and on, on the right, so he'll cut in or he'll, he'll knock it past you and go down the line. Obviously, we still do. We Jono still like he'll go to games. Jimmy will go to games, and they'll still see that. And they'll just little things like they'll tell you this is what he does. He's pretty tricky, this guy, or um, like the centre half stuff slow, so you just put it over their head. Like little things like that. He'll give, he'll give you information. But obviously, at, um, at a club, it's a lot more detailed, and you obviously have a lot of videos, and you even have to watch and do your own clips. Um, but obviously, coming away from that, it's quite refreshing not doing that because <laughs> it can be a little bit boring. Um, so no, not really. At this level, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's quite hard to even get a lot of footage at this level. For, at this level, and maybe even the two above, like step four and three, it's quite tough to watch any sort of clips of anyone really on on, on YouTube. So if anyone, if anyone wants to, anyone wants to do research on us, it's, it's so easy, isn't it? Like, it's so easy. Yeah. Um, and do you watch our stuff back? Uh, um, like the highlights. Yeah, I watch the highlights. Yeah, yeah. I always watch the highlights, and then I text Frankie if like. Um, my save isn't in there. Can I get the? <laughs> can I get? Can I get a clip? Um, just because I want. I mainly mainly just because I want to watch it back. Like because I think a lot of the time things don't look as good on video. Like like when I as like you know you might remember something a little bit better at the time. Um, just to watch it back. But no, I do. Yeah, I watch the non-league diaries. Um, I think it's really good. Um, like inside, I love the I love the Dorkin one as well, and the, the one they do with Walton Hirsch and you know, the. A um, bunch of amateurs. I, I, I love that. Um, I just don't. I wouldn't pay like because a bunch of amateurs started to do the Patreons and stuff like that. So I watch the free stuff, but maybe not subscribe like that. Yeah, we're we're better than them anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, yeah. so it's very much just you let Jim and Jono kind of tell you who their 
their dangers are. Like, I would say so. I mean, it gets to the point now where like you've, I've played a lot of these teams, so you sort of like remember a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, when you're playing them the second time around, this end of the season, you can sort of like remember like the last time we played them, whether it was home or away. The, the reverse fixture this time, it's like you know, you sort of remember a little bit if they have the same team. I mean, a lot of teams have been chopped and changed, haven't they? Recently, yeah. maybe Croy Croydon today, for example. You know, I might be wrong, but stati statistically, you're one of the best. Well, you're the best goalkeeper in this league. The league right? We've had like zero. Statistically, no, Jack, I am. No, I'm joking. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but like you know, we had zero minutes trailing. Um, in a game uh, with how many goals conceded? Like we've had five clean sheets. It's like one. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but there can't have been many goals conceded. Um, but yeah, that, that, there was five five clean sheets now. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. That that's yeah. I mean, like I said, it's it with the the team in front of me and especially the defence like um, JJ Max. Um, Ryan, Jack, when he's playing, um, Smithy, like they, they, we've sort of like we've played a lot together this year, so it's sort of great, like a great, great, um, great relationship. And um, like I said, with with Jim and Jono, they're doing everything right, so it makes it quite easy for me. Um, sort of just the the main like feeling is quite relaxed, and um, especially for me, they just let me sort of crack on, you know. So it's um, makes my job really easy. Um, yeah. I've been told to ask about your your gloves or something. Apparently, you use different gloves to most keepers, or I don't know. Yeah, my, the brand I wear at the minute is Voss. Um, so I mean, a lot. Uh, there's a few goalies that um, obviously wear them that might be on the TV, so you might see them about. Um, but um, no, so I, a lot of the time I train with these um, with these non-grip gloves. They have no grip on the palm. I like warm up in them quite a bit. Um, it's basically to like just improve your handling, improve your like your um, your handling and gloves at all sorts. Like I think even like um, not only catching a ball, but like if I hold it out to kick it, you got to be more alert and because you can't be um, sort of slack for any um, anything. Otherwise, you're sort of gonna find out you're gonna get one in the other nose. So um, no, they're really really good. Um, great sort of um, great invention and everything. So um, no, they're really good. But they're obviously, they're obviously done by the lads at the modern day um, goalkeeper. So. Um, another really, really good piece of kit, and um, I would ref definitely recommend them. I obviously get do a lot of goalkeeping coaching myself on the side, so a lot of the lads um, I coach will wear them, and it's um, they'll obviously say as well, like I do. You can just see the improvement; it's massive. That's um, sort of gives you. It's not only like the technique; it's like gives you the confidence to come out and um, catch things. Because a lot of goalies don't don't really catch a lot of things. They sort of opt to punch or parry. So, so yeah. So you wear them for training in the warm up, and then in the match you're wearing. Cricket. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I wouldn't wear them in a game. <laughs> I'm not that um, unless I've like forgot my match gloves, I might have to wear them. But like, no, um, just depends. Like, it just depends what I'm feeling on the day. If I like, I think I I, I just wear these today, or I wear I wear my um, uh, non grips today. You know, it's just um, just yeah, I, I, I wear them as much as I can, and uh, especially for training, I wear like even if I'm not wearing them. I wear like the worst gloves I can, like the battered ones that I wore back in like August, say. So I'm not relying on the on the glove to do any of the work for me. I'm, it's all about me. So I hope you forgive me for saying this, but from my perspective, you've got to be a little bit nuts to to be a goalkeeper. <laughs> like, you've got to have something that's like yeah. <laughs> like if a if a striker's coming towards you and it's a one v one, you've got to think right. This ball's not getting past. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, um, <laughs> you've got to like kind of yeah, put your course. body on the line. A little bit, a little bit of a nutter. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. It's. Um, Have you always had that kind of like? Oh, the ball's I not was, going. I know. You know what? I didn't. I didn't at all. I. I think when I was really young, I was a little bit tentative to like dive at people's feet and stuff like that. I never really had. My favourite thing was like catching the ball, like a, a high cross or something like that, or like just flying about, diving, like because I was quite like. Um, like springy when I was little, just flying about, getting muddy, and like just having someone kick a shot, um, kick a ball at you really hard. So I never really, I wouldn't say I always have it. You just sort of learn to do it, <laughs> and um, yeah, still, still am really learning to do it. So for me, I mean, it's quite, it's quite hard to sort of 
to, to do it. So, I mean, it takes a type of person, I guess, doesn't it? <laughs> you um, get injured. Yeah. Or if, like, during a game, you you can't kind of carry on. Yeah. Touch wood. <laughs> yeah, it won't happen. Yeah. It will never happen. What are, you, what are you doing? Casting some spell or something? <laughs> you want to go and go? <laughs> no chance. <laughs> But who who is your like? Do you get pick of who goes in goal? Do you get? Oh, I've I've not I've never spoke to anyone about this. When when Joe did the one of these last week, that's the first I heard of that. Yeah, I, I was quite surprised. Yeah, and we, we spoke about it on Tuesday, and he said yeah, he'd be a great goalie. So I've never seen him. Maybe I should take a few shots against him, and see how he can do. But um, I mean, Flatty Flatty fanc fancies himself. I know that. Yeah. But the obvious pick is Ryan, isn't it? Because he's just massive. <laughs> like, just take up a lot of space. But whether he'd want to do it or not is another question. I heard last season that. Dean Rule went in goal for bad shot or something. Did he? Yeah, I think their goalkeeper got red carded or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. I might speak to him about it. Yeah. That's um. Did he say how he did? No, he didn't. Oh, so that's, that's probably done. probably a tale, isn't it? Yeah, couldn't have done too well. Yeah. But um, yeah. So you don't really get. You haven't talked about that as a. No, we've never really spoke about it, which is weird. Um, obviously you're not having a sub goal. I, sw I spoke about someone who's not involved with the club the other day about it, and they said, "Do you have a sub goalie?" And I said, "Actually, like, no, like, we don't." Which is a bit, um, it's a bit weird. I think it's just quite, it can be quite tough finding someone to do it at this level. Then, yeah. then again, I did it for Whitley Bay for a bit, so <laughs> can't be that hard. Right, from the sounds of it, from from Jono, you're the first person on the on the team sheet every every time, yeah. or every game. I mean, I can't play anywhere else really. Well, I mean, I th I'd like to think I could, but I think with the quality we've got now, especially, <laughs> quite hard for me to. Does that does that give you a bit of confidence that? You know, he, he does have that faith in you. That yeah, oh, definitely. Gonna... That's like, going back to it, that's like what gives me the like freedom and confidence to play having a manager that backs you like that. It's, um, it's it, it, like, it's, it's really tough to find that, especially as a young goalie, because a lot of the, like when I wanted to go out on loan, I was told I didn't have the experience to do it, but the only way you're gonna get that experience is by doing it. So yeah. it can be quite hard, like getting that initial step. But if you find someone like a, a manager and a, and a management team like like we've got a fan um, who like completely back you. It's um, now make like I said, it makes my job really easy because it takes the pressure off me. Um, I, I do everything I can by working hard in the week and sort of getting my mind right. And if I, and if they take the pressure off me um, by doing that and um, sort of allowing me to go and play with that freedom, it's it's a recipe for success, I think. So, who who do you kind of? compare yourself to or, or want to be or um that's a difficult one um i really like watching jan summer i really like i really like him as a goalie i think he's like um because my type of build you know he's not massive so i've got to look at those sort of goalies who aren't i couldn't look at someone like nick pope and say i want to be like him because i'm never going to be like him because i'm not six foot six or whatever he is um so i really like summer um I like Onana for the way like he sort of come through this sort of criticism at United. I think he's playing a little bit better now, but sort of like could sort of respect him for that and the way the, with the ball at his feet. Obviously Edison as well. I love watching Edison um, with the ball at his feet. It's, um, there's a lot of like I wouldn't say there's one guy in particular that you got to take little bits, the best bits from little ones, and just think I'll oh, just I want to do that or, yeah. um, for each one. So no, I think I'd say um, Edison and, and Sommer. They're they're my two that I love watching there. The most, yeah. So you're kind of like taking bits from different. Yeah, oh, definitely. Doing like, in your own. Definitely, definitely. I, I mean, even in like um, at any level, like, it doesn't have to just have to be at the top. You just watch any any goalie and think, oh, I, I like what he did there, and I might try that next time. And if it works for me, I'll just keep doing it. You know, so it's little, little things like that. You don't know. I think it's important to be you have your own sort of style. So just trying to develop that. You know what I mean? Harry was trying to find out your five-year plan. My five-year plan? Yeah. Oh, that's top secret. Oh, that that. Is, yeah, exactly. That's in a vault at home. That's, that's <laughs> stay at Farnham until they're in the Premier League, right? <laughs> I was, Frankie asked me this the other day. I think he was like it was over text. I think, I think I'd, um, I did. I just, I don't know. Um, just, yeah. You know what? I can't. I, I can't say. Yeah, I mean, I, if, I, if I if I look if I like look back at uh, when I was at Everton, if you would ask me like where you think you're gonna be. I wouldn't have had a clue. Like, I would never have imagined me being here. So, yeah, not in a bad way, but, yeah. <laughs> but, like, but you've got to take opportunities as they come as well. Don't you? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Like I just, I think it's important just to, I just grab everything with both hands and just sort of roll with it. So it's, um, no, definitely. Um, you touched on the modern goalkeeping. Yeah. What, what, 
what's that been like? Obviously, I know they've got quite a bit of traction. I'm always seeing stuff about them. Yeah, yeah. See, media. Uh -huh. Has that helped, do you think, a lot with kind of just building your profile? And yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think so. It's like, sort of, I think it's quite easy when you leave an academy, to sort of like fall off the map, like sort of no one really know about you. Um, because obviously going into non-league is quite a lot harder to like track um, people's movements and um, sort of what they're doing. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't really know like um, how people sort of um, had the idea that I was at Fleetwood after Everton and things like that. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. Like that was never over there. So like I said, it can be quite difficult to, um, to, set, to sort of find people. But with them, it's obviously like shining a good light on me of, um, when I wasn't um, like a, a big club. Yeah. Um, like when I'm on my way in non-league, they can still sort of, um, I can showcase myself on a, on a big level and, and, and sort of get myself out there still. Um, so yeah, definitely positive. I would say you you stand out differently to quite a few of the other keepers at this level. I would say one thing is noticeably is your kicking. Would uh -huh. you say like that's your best attribute or is there anything else you're kind of... Um, yeah, I'd say I I, I, mean, I wouldn't say my best, but it's just it's hard because it's hard to like pinpoint the best. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, obviously, you guys might look at it a bit differently, but um, yeah, it's um, it can't, I'd say I just try my best to sort of help the team if we can be like that, because a lot of the teams have like ten players and a goalkeeper. You want to be like eleven players, and yeah. like, I can also save shots as well and come for crosses and sort of take the pressure off the team that way as well. So I'm just trying to be like an extra player, really. So, um, so that's just, it, yeah, that's just yeah. sort of like the way. So, I mean, like I said, being at Academy, I've always played out short from the back. I, like, I remember like my first game for Reading, I can still remember it. Like me and my dad went up the park the, the day before, practiced like drop kicks out my hands over the rugby crossbar to get it as far away as I could when I was like eight. And then the first, uh, I made a save, kicked it long. And the manager was like, no, 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 we don't do that here. And I had to roll it out every time short. And I, so I never really got to like kick it long and do these sort of things like you do in non-league. Um, so I've always played out from the back and been like confident on the ball. Um, so I mean, I guess that sort of helps, helps the, like, the, with that foundation to, um, to go on and sort of play the way that I play now, you know? Do you have a backup plan of, you know, if... I mean, I'm, I've, like I said, I, I was obviously at college, so I was, um, I've got some sort of qualifications. I've got all my GCSEs and everything like that. I, um, if I'm not coaching at the minute, like if I'm not coaching in the afternoons, I'll do a lot of um, like online courses along with like Coursera and stuff like that. I'll just to better myself and so I'll add to the CV and stuff like that. Um, if I've got some, if I've got some times, then I'll do I'll do some work like that to sort of so I'm not just like stagnating. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I do have a um, a little CV going so I mean like I said but the main the main thing is just get as far with the football as I can give it a real good go and then because like I say I'm only 19 so it's quite because you've got a bit of time to sort of still try it you said you don't really like have snacks and stuff uh -huh. what's your kind of pre-match meal uh, if you had like um if you had like a ba uh, ball breakfast like wrap before like with like the bacon the eggs sausage beans everything in it well ideally I'd have that but obviously it's quite hard to put together. So I'd either just have like a bacon sarnie or like a egg sandwich, scrambled egg on toast um, with beans and stuff like that. Um, sausage sarnie, anything like that would um, that like be ideal. It'd be like quite large in the morning? No, or is that no, kind of late, you no, eat a bit later? No, really? I'd, I, I mean, I'd, I'd probably have it maybe like 10, I don't know, and then wouldn't really have much more. Don't want to have too much before you play, you, know? you don't want to feel too heavy. I always see your, your, is it your parents that come, up, come to the yeah, place, yeah, 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 yeah. Even mum mom and dad, yeah. What are they, what are they like after the game? I mean, obviously now, you know, you haven't exactly had too much to well, complain if about, but. If I've let in a few goals, we're having a big row afterwards. No, I'm joking. A little uh, punch up in the yeah, car. Yeah, me and my dad. <laughs> yeah. um, no, they, um, they, they just come to every game just purely, purely um, because obviously they, they want to support. My dad loves the football, my mum loves watching me. A lot of my family come as well, like my cousins will come and watch and because um, they're obviously from around here as well. My uncles and uh, uncles and aunties and their kids. So it'll be, it's, like, it's quite good having them all there, like I said, because it's local. It's um, really nice. Obviously, um, at college, 
when I played a lot of games there, they obviously couldn't watch couldn't watch a lot of them. Um, when I moved away and went to obviously moved up to Liverpool, my mum and dad would watch like the big ones, like when I um, would play like Man United or someone like that. They'd they'd come and watch games like that, but that was once in a blue moon, really, like maybe once in the year, um, once or twice in the year. So they never really like, and and obviously afterwards after leaving, I was playing up north again. So they never really got to w really consistently watch me for the last couple of years. Really since COVID, for like maybe four, three or four years. So um, I think sort of just taking the opportunity while they can, because while I'm um, being here, it's really really easy to pop over to the plough and come over and then just like then watch me. You know, it's a nice little afternoon. Yeah, I, I, for them it is. I think I, I mean I love having them there because it's. For years, it's, it's not been like that, so it's quite nice. Does it add a bit of extra pressure or no? No, no. I, like you say, when you're when you're playing, you're not thinking about that at all. You're just looking over. Maybe when we score, I'll like just give it a little one of them to my dad or something. But like, I don't know. It's um, no, it's, it's no extra pressure. I wouldn't say no. When you make a save, uh -huh. and you know it's like. Wow, that was that was a pretty good save. <laughs> like, what's, what's that to yourself? Because like, I see you don't really have much of a reaction. You have maybe I should, like I? I should get up and like give it up. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, you have maybe like whoever's around you kind of comes up and like you know fist bumps you or something like. Just, yeah, I yeah, hope they well appreciate done. it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no um, I mean, luckily, often, more often than not, I don't have to make many real like. Um, it says obviously like when you when you do something when you do something well. Um, I don't know, you just want to, I think the best people at anything, like um, tennis, um, football, anything, they make it look really easy. So you just want to make everything look really easy. That's what I just want to play. That's my cool. main, um, yeah, basically my main, like the main goal is to just like think, right, like you sort of want to put it, put it out there that like that, nah, it wasn't that tough for me. I'm just, I'm not going to celebrate it because I think I'll celebrate maybe a penalty, yeah. maybe, but like. Um, and what's your, um, for, for when there is a penalty against yeah. us? I don't ask me about pens. I'm I'm shocking at penalties. <laughs> My record's terrible. Because when when I, I mean I don't I don't play for yeah, the, yeah, myself. Yeah. Um, but whenever I'm at the penalty spot at Farnham and I stick the ball on there, I'm like, wow, this is quite a, this is quite far to kick. I thought it was I a thought you say close. But then when <laughs> but when you're when you're um, at, as a goalkeeper yeah. like on the line. You're like, wow, that's a bit close. So they moved the spot. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I mean, I just sort of. I mean, I'd like to say what I do is good, but I'm, I'm shocking at pens. So I just, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, when I was playing for Whitley Bay, we got, I got knocked out of the vase twice. <laughs> we, um, we had a pen shootout. We got knocked out, and then it turns out their player wasn't legible to play. So we, we replayed the game. Another team, like the team that went through, we played them. Went to pens again. We lost again. So. <laughs> A lot of experience in one year. <laughs> so I've been knocked out the vase three times in two seasons at non-league, so. That's impressive, that's a good stat. I mean, that's a good stat, isn't it? That? Get, that on the, get that on the Twitter. <laughs> the group of players that are in the team now, you guys all seem to hang out quite a lot together. Yeah. And go on nights out and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, so what's that, what's that like? So what's that like with them um, kind of going out with the team and, and having that kind of Connecting us together. I don't know. No, I think it's so important. Like to just, it really like builds the, like the relationship you have in the togetherness you have in the team. It's like makes you go a lot further. Um, I think it's yeah, it's really important to have that. Um, I mean, I love going on a night out anyway, full stop. So I, I, any excuse, you know what I mean. So it'd be, um, it's good. I'm looking forward to uh, got Marbella in the summer, so I'm really looking forward to that. Because oh, <laughs> I've never been on a lads holiday, so that'll be my first proper, proper taste of it. That's nice. <laughs> Yeah, wait to see. Looking forward to Jersey as well, that's next Yeah, year. yeah. No, I mean, I've never been. Um, obviously, you, you all have, so I've never been. I've heard good things. It was good last year. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. So, um, wait and see. Um, well, no, like I said, looking forward to that as well. Tom Smith is behind us. Get the camera on that, Elliot. This is the car. There's some... It's the Brian Jack. <laughs> no, yeah. Right now, I'm not going to talk to you now. As soon as I cross this gate, Jack, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. <laughs> oh, I'm never fitting through there. Absolutely not. Oh, you'll do well to get in there as well. No. Oh, you know you can't, don't you? Well, oh, difference is if I scrape that. Don't you? <laughs> hey, what you've done well then. 
that if in the handbrake doesn't work, so leave Fuck it. Off. Leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you just have to leave it in gear. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Wait, Wait, so what, what do you do on a hill? What, what did you do on my hill? That's low leaning and gear. So if someone hits the car, then it's a bit fucked, but... <laughs>